Hello everybody, my name is Mark Hanchett, founder and CEO of Atlas Motor Vehicles, and today I guess we're going to talk about the weather. Uh, so a lot of questions that we've answered in a few different videos, but we want to go into details here. Uh, how do we handle very hot temperatures and very cold temperatures? And those matter for two different reasons. Uh, the most primary one uh, is just performance of the vehicle. How do we know that when, if you live in say Northern Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, or you live in Florida, Arizona, where we're currently based, how do we know that you're gonna get consistent performance in that vehicle? We all know that internal combustion engine vehicles do suffer from performance changes as well, but there's been a lot of work to get that very consistent. We wanna make sure we do the same thing in your electric pickup truck or electric work vehicle. So. Uh, the second part of that is of course charging. So we can't charge a vehicle very fast in cold weather. We also can't charge a vehicle very fast in all very hot weather, at least with conventional systems you can't. And that's where some of the secret sauce of Atlas Motor Vehicles comes in. We're designing the solution in such a way that you get consistent performance in hot and cold, but you also get consistent charging performance both in hot and cold. And you don't necessarily have to sacrifice things like longevity of the battery pack. Um, so we'll start at the outside and sort of work our way in. So a battery pack uh, is basically a consistent or a, uh, of an enclosure. It could be a structural enclosure. Um, and then inside there, right, there are a number of battery cells. And within this system, there's a cooling system that's inside there. So Atlas Motor Vehicles, we start in the external structure. So how do we very effectively manage the temperature holistically of that battery pack system? Uh, that includes the addition of maybe airflow that's traveling through there, as well as uh, veins and things like that that travel through there. Imagine incorporating a heat exchanger within a pack design. That's a very interesting sort of approach, and that's some of the latest IP that we have out there. Um, and then as we look internally, we start to actually incorporate within the, you know, the, the cells that are sitting inside there, we incorporate high dielectric fluids that actually touch the cells themselves. So, um, as that material is sort of flowing through there, as that fluid is flowing through, we're able to maintain the temperature of that fluid two different ways. One, we exchange heat with the outside air, and we move air through a heat exchanger system right to cool that. Um, number two is we actually heat the pack directly. We have heating systems built into the pack design, very, very close to the cells, almost directly touching them. So from a pack perspective, we start with the structure, we make sure things are properly insulated, there's barriers in place, right, to ensure that we don't lose energy when we don't want to lose it. We're not also not adding energy to the system when we don't want to add it. Then we focus on the cooling structure inside there. So we say that our pack is submerged, but in reality, uh, while it is submerged, there's fluid traveling through veins and various different systems. In fact, it touches the cells directly, um, which comes to the third approach, which is we go all the way down to the cell level. So uh, this is the first prototype uh, concept cell that we built up. The team's working on much better design now, but um, essentially imagine all of your electrodes are attached in here with no tabs, right? No little tab that's connected to the terminals on the end. And we actually use that to pull heat out of the cell itself. Uh, and we're able to do that on both the top and the bottom of the cell very efficiently where that coolant touches this. There's features on it to extract heat from it. There's heat exchangers that are built into the bus bar systems that are extracted to it, which now becomes structural, which means that's the first time I've ever heard of anyone doing bus bars that are structural, that are also heat exchangers within the system. So that's proprietary to Atlas's approach. Um, and then of course, all of that is transferred to the ambient air condition that's outside to be able to extract heat from it. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that we can charge Atlas's battery cells and battery pack system when it's 118, 120 degrees here in Phoenix, Arizona. But it also means we can do that same thing in less than 15 minutes when it's say negative 20, negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit in say Northern Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, those really far North states, Alaska, um, you know, sort of along that line there. And when we look at those particular systems and that, uh, that and those conditions, we wanted to make sure that we could, one, do that very, very well, right? When it's very cold outside, we wanna prevent dendrite growth. So that means we apply heat to the system, we raise the pack temperature, right? In those conditions, we do that very, very quickly. We're talking about within a minute um, to raise that pack temperature. Then of course, we, as we're pumping energy into it, there's losses which produce heat. And we're extracting that energy out so we can maintain that temperature at a very, very level point. Uh, and we do that all starting with the pack sort of working in or the cell working out. The cell is 
the most efficient cell design when it comes to thermal energy transfer. We've been working on this since 2016, pulling energy out of that. The pack design itself is optimally designed to extract energy from the fluid that's in there, that you transfer energy from the cell to the fluid, and then from the fluid to another fluid technically, which is air. Um, and as you transfer that through, we're minimizing the distance that it has to travel, we're minimizing the space. We're also including structural pieces in there. So your bus bars become structures within the pack. Your enclosure becomes a structure within the pack and all of those things are heat exchangers. So unlike systems where maybe they run coolant through the structure, right? But it indirectly cools the cells or systems where maybe you, you directly cool with a snake system or even a cooling plate top and bottom those indirectly cool the cells. There's another something in between there uh, to insulate those cells from the rest of the system. And then bus bars and various other things are additional components. We incorporated that all into a simplified system, but we can do that in such a way that we are far more efficient, almost four times as efficient, I believe was the last number I heard in terms of heating and cooling compared to the industry sort of standards that are out there today. And even some of the stuff that's in development today. And that's how we do it. Thank you.